Hello and welcome to video 4, covering content for test 2 of the OCR Entry Level Certificate in Computer Science. This video we will look at legal issues. Our first legal issue is the act of hacking. Hacking is the act of accessing another person's computer system without their permission or consent. There are many reasons for people to commit hacking, and these can be for fun, for the challenge of it, to steal data, to plant viruses or cause damage to a computer system, for industrial espionage, which is stealing of data from another company, or industrial sabotage, which is actually destroying data from another company, or simply to test security of the systems that a company has got in place. Hacking causes risk to the public because hackers might actually steal documents or data or even someone's identity. Alternatively, they can simply damage the system or delete their files or plant harmful viruses. So you have to be very careful about protecting against this. Hacking can also be used for good. This is called ethical hacking, and this is where a company will pay hackers to stress test their security systems and see if there are any vulnerabilities. If any vulnerabilities are found, then they can be patched. Our second legal issue is piracy. Piracy is the act of stealing or redistributing digital media, and digital media can be classified as ebooks, music, video, software, basically anything that is owned by somebody else that is in a digital format. The most common type of piracy is the illegal download of movies or TV shows. Music is also another highly targeted medium for pirates. Piracy costs the music, film and software development industries billions of dollars each year. This has a big impact as it means that fewer movies, games or albums can be made and those that are typically have a smaller budget than they would otherwise have available. A typical modern film, for example, employs thousands of workers. With smaller budgets, fewer people are employed and those that are get paid less. Typical punishments for piracy include fines and jail terms depending on the crime. Internet service providers are even banning or blocking customers from accessing the internet if found to be downloading illegal products. The third and final legal issue we need to look at is access to data. Companies have an obligation to keep people's data secure. They are only allowed to store data that is relevant, and these are actually two principles of a piece of legislation called the Data Protection Act, which we will look at shortly. Most companies rely on common security methods such as usernames, passwords and security questions to access their systems. The problem is that each of these can be discovered if either the company or the user does not keep them secure. This will allow access to the service without anyone knowing that it has happened. Companies try to use other methods to maintain security. Encryption, for example, is a common method of maintaining security, and this is where they scramble the messages which are being transmitted over the internet. More commonly now, we're using two-factor authentication, which is where if you sign into a service, a code will be sent to another device, i.e. your phone, and then you will have to confirm that you are the one accessing that service. Also, companies sometimes email you to inform you of any unauthorised or unusual access to your computer. For example, if you've logged in from another country when you're on holiday, you might receive an email to say, is this you? And if it is, you can ignore it. If not, you can then challenge it. If a company is at fault for a security breach, it can cost them millions of pounds, not only in reimbursing the customer who may have lost money, but in having to implement new security procedures. Let's have a look now at the legislation or the laws that protect you when using a computer. There are three pieces of legislation you need to be aware of. The Data Protection Act in 1998, the Computer Misuse Act of 1990, and the Copyright Designs and Patents Act of 1998. The Data Protection Act controls how your personal information is stored on a computer and how it is used by organisations, businesses or the government. Everyone responsible for using data has to follow strict rules called the Data Protection Principles. They must ensure that the information is used fairly and lawfully, 
used for limited, specifically stated purposes, used in a way that is adequate, relevant, and not excessive, that the data is accurate, that the data is kept for no longer than is absolutely necessary, that the data is handled according to the people's data protection rights, that it's kept safe and secure, and that it's not transferred outside of the European economic area without adequate protection. The next piece of legislation is the Computer Misuse Act in 1990. Hacking has been around as long as the internet has been around, and actually longer. But prior to 1990, there was very little legislation in place to tackle the problems caused by hacking. Although everybody knew that it was wrong, there was nothing that anybody could do about it. As the problem grew, it became apparent that specific legislation was needed to enable hackers to be prosecuted under the law. So, in 1990, the Computer Misuse Act was passed. The Computer Misuse Act recognises the following offences. Unauthorised access to computer material, which means accessing a computer or a system that you are not supposed to access. Unauthorised access with the intent to commit or facilitate a crime, and this is where you gain access to a computer and you are going to try and do some damage to the computer or the files. And then finally, we've got unauthorised modification of computer material, which is where you change things on a computer that you're unauthorised to be on. Finally, we have the Copyright Designs and Patents Act. This act is the current UK copyright law. It gives the creator of literary, dramatic, musical or artistic works the right to control the way in which their material is used. The rights cover broadcast and public performance, copying of material, adapting material, issuing new material, renting and lending copies of this material to the public. In many cases, the creator will also have the right to be identified as the author and can object to any distortions of his or her work. Each type of creation has a copyright duration. For example, films, literature, i.e. books, and music have a 70-year protection. After that time, it becomes free to the public to use and adapt as they see fit. Thank you for watching this video, and I hope to see you in my final video covering content for Test 2, where we will look at the environmental impacts of computers.